Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Episode 16. Check the wire. Myself, Dan Geesing, Ryan Gary, Anthony, Ryan, Northern Lion, the Turno. Um, <laughs> welcome. Thank you guys Wait, so much for being here. What's the genesis for that? What's the genesis for uh, using my branding? Well, so normally I'll like call you Ryan, bunch of made up names, Northern Lion, the Turno. But I'm like, this is the place where like, I don't necessarily go down that road. Cause people be like, is his name really Anthony? I'm like, no. So I did. So like I had that synaptial conversation in my head like that. Anyways, episode 16, man. Super excited to be here. Yeah. It's four months roughly. That's pretty crazy. Dude, I, I don't check numbers a lot, but I did check prior to today before the show started. We have 383 ratings on iTunes. If you're oh, one dude. of those people that left it, thank you. Are we at like uh, 4.8? Uh, they're actually, you know, I don't want to pat our double backs, but they're all 5.0s. It's 5.0 across the board. That's across incredible. the board. That's 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 good sauce. So if you're listening on the, the audio side of things and rating it, thank you guys so much. But from thank you so much to uh, what's been up lately, Mr. Ryan. Oh, Gary. Dude, it's been it's been a big week. It's been a big week for me. I don't know if we were, if we're going to jump right into it. Definitely the the dub of the week is the the merch launch. Oh, it's the big win of the week without a doubt. The, People have been asking oh, go ahead, go ahead. I was say before I, I feel like that's like the water skiing squirrel that you and your local news like, "Hey, tune in in 5 minutes for water skiing squirrel." Hit me with the L of the week because I think the merch okay. is going to like the, I'm I'm getting my my ore, I'm getting my Maddock. I'm going to be digging for <laughs> for gems in that. Uh, I mean, I don't know if I have like a compelling L this week, which is a little bit, it's full of hubris to say we had like a couple of technical issues. Like I released an Isaac episode where the screen region was just messed up. So like the bottom 20% of the screen was just a black bar. And then the top of it was like off the screen. But apart from that, like it's been a, it's been a pretty good week. I don't know if I have a, a big L this week, honestly. Did you record multiple episodes with the region off or just a one? One with it off, and then I re started recording the second one, and I looked over on my other monitor, and I was like, oh, that's not right. And you get that, like, chilling feeling of, like, oh, no. Like, <laughs> how many? I don't. I knew it had been at least one video, but I was like, oh, this could have been, like, 10 videos I've recorded with this screen region messed up. But I guess, like, the, the learning lesson there is, like, when I, on my old computer, when I had OBS uh, open, I just had one uh, source and all of my games went into that source. So it was like, if I'm playing Isaac, the game scene, the game source changes to Isaac. If I'm playing Warzone, I go in and I put Warzone in. Now I have like segmented ones. So I have like an Isaac, a Warzone, a Monster Train, uh, a miscellaneous one for Northern Lion tries. So it's, it's a little bit niche for feedback, but at least if there's a problem in one series, it doesn't go to every other series. It's like it's quarantined itself in whatever the source is. Super piece of sand question for you. You used to record an XSplit ever? Or no? Yeah, way back in from like 2012 to 2016. So 2017, maybe. And, and I don't know if this functionality is there, but in XSplit, I continue to use it, even though it's not as good as OBS, because you can live pause the recording. They have that in OBS now. Really? Yeah. Okay. I, I, without getting into too much information, yeah. on today's Monster Train episode, I got like halfway in and I had like some severe gastrointestinal distress. I was like sweating. I was getting distracted. And I was like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it for another like 40 minutes. So I just looked at my OBS and there's a big pause button. And I was like, let's try this on for size. And it, it totally worked. So use OBS Studio, not OBS like kernel labs oh, yeah, yeah okay yeah okay. obs studio for sure okay and then with your new computer probably just it's just like butter then instantaneous mm, yeah okay i mean the only other all of my l's this week are like technical like i changed my recording settings and then one of my monster train videos was 15 gigabytes and i was like <laughs> that's way that's way too big for like a 2d game and then like so i've been i've been tweaking that stuff to try to make it better but like no no big l's really it's it's honestly been like a, a week that's way on the up. How about you? All right. So so I figure what kind of layer the show is like L L W W. Cause I mean sure. we're gonna talk about the merch a lot. So yeah. So, so my big L is actually it's not super granular, but maybe meta. But I've been kind of burning the candle at both ends, you know, during since we've had all this extra time at home and stuff. And Friday night, like for whatever reason, I've like 
I need learned I need to start just building in a little bit of recreation time every day because on Friday came around I really I did nothing but work and then like been with family which is like it's like a different kind of recreation time it's like something that you love to do but I didn't have any just kind of like me just chilling time like even a couple minutes a day so on Friday night I stayed up late I was like up to like 3 a.m I was watching like half falling asleep watching the the Spelunky documentary on YouTube and I woke up the next morning, Saturday mornings, I usually wake up early, you know, do like the kids breakfast, all that kind of stuff. And I woke up and I was like, and I don't know how the body works. This is how I think it works, but, but don't quote me on it. I feel like sometimes if you don't sleep, like, uh, let me give you the analogy. So when I used to coach football uh, as a college graduate assistant, the season was like six, seven months long. I would never get sick during the season, but the day after the season was over, I'd get sick. And like, it didn't happen once. It was like a concurrent thing. So I feel like, I don't know if there's like sickness or like bacteria that's in you. And like when you're, when your defense is down, it pops out. Anyways, I got really sick and I never get sick for 24 hours. And so long story short, I, I kind of learned, it really drove home the point of me of like, just make maintaining a, a normal sleep schedule. Cause I'm pretty normal, but just one night, like just completely bash me. But but it also, it, it knocked me off a running schedule, right? So I've been running for uh, like 20, you know, four straight weeks. I was on the, the last day of the fourth week and I was sick and I couldn't run. And, and so I've just, something that made me think about is I, I, the way I, my DNA is, and I don't know if this may help someone else, is, uh, <laughs> is the, for the, uh, something for, amusing to for, you for right the now? audio listeners, uh, Ryan's cat just walked underneath, looks like he had a moving, uh, a moving beard is that I'm like a very streak based person. So if I have like 30 days of doing something in a row, it's so much easier to keep going versus like uh, a day or two. Um, so I'd say, I'd say my big L is just letting my sleep schedule get off track one day, but also being able to learn from that. Yeah. I, I mean, I agree with that a hundred percent. I've anecdotally, if you could just move for a moment, please. Uh, anecdotally, I've, uh, I've had the same thing happen where you're like, you know, going really hard. And then on your first day off, you just get sick immediately. <laughs> and then like on the next day, you're like, I'm pretty good. Um, but I was, I've been thinking about that. I, okay. I'm going to have to get this guy out of here. He's bumping into the mic. Come on. Come on. Come on. Um, but, uh, I was thinking about that and talking about that on stream the other day. Cause, uh, you know, during quarantine, I haven't been able to go to the gym. And for like the first couple of weeks, I like kept up my routine at home. And then for like the middle four or six weeks, it was kind of like some weeks I was good, some weeks I was off. And I was like, I really need to get back into the routine of doing this because I'm the same way. I mean, I remember we talked about it. Like you have to, if you just do it for a while, even when you don't necessarily want to do it, then it becomes something you want to do and you feel worse for, for skipping it. So I, I didn't want to lose that momentum either. I mean, if you're sick, what can you do? You yeah. Know? But like, I feel, probably, but do you yeah, feel like you can not make yourself sick, but by like, cause I like clearly in quarantine, you're, you're very limited to other, and neither of us are qualified to talk about this. So let's talk about, of it. course. Yeah. It's like, we're limited to bacteria and viruses. All right. Like we, if we, if there was ever a time we have super protection against that because a, we're not exposing ourselves to a lot of it. And two, when we go out, you're covered up. Like, do you think that stuff like that can live inside you? Or I, I just don't know how you get sick like that. Like if you know you're in a bubble. Uh, yeah. And I, I guess it's like, obviously like germs have a lot to do with it, but I'm assuming like stress is, uh, mm -hmm. is, is relevant as well. I don't know. Cause it, it seems like illogical to me that your body would be like, we're going to get sick, but just hold it <laughs> off, hold it off until Sunday. Like, I don't, I don't think we, our immune system has any knowledge of that, but I think maybe there's, you know, some <laughs> Can you, could you just move a little? Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, th I think maybe there's something where like, you know, when you're working hard and you're kind of like on edge and you're, you're already like activated, maybe that keeps your immune system working overtime a bit longer. And then as soon as you start to relax, you know, maybe that's when it gets a chance to, to get into you, but yeah, you know, it beats me. No. <laughs> yeah. So then, and I just, I'm going to real quick. Cause I think, uh, there's a lot, I think the merch is going to take up a lot of time, which is good. And then for me, just the the W of the week has been. Uh, I thought we had a we had a, a unity session where we started good. We got we got in a little bit of like uh, you know toasty area, and then we got out, which was nice instead of like staying in there. So I'd say that's like a mini W. And then the other W is just staying consistent on YouTube and what I've seen that's done. And and I feel like you know you're of course you're always like an inspiration, someone to look to, but also like Sinvicta. I'm like all right. 
So like you're you're like I always looked at you as like the unicorn, right? Like you have a unique personality. You put put out a ton of videos. Okay, cool, that worked for you. And then you look at Sinvicta, kind of. I mean, not kind of. He emulated your model of just consistently putting out an episode of the same game for 900 plus days. And I think that's like a model that, cause I know early we talked about like doing edited videos and trying to different stuff. I think that's a model that appeals more to me. And it's kind of working right now with Spelunky, a game from 2013 has been doing consistently well on the channel because it's been like every day at the same time without missing it. So that kind of like opened my eyes about, you know, just looking at that model more seriously and sticking to it. So that's been a, a big W for me, but to pivot from that, do you have any thought? I mean, that's kind of your, your MO though, right? Yeah. I mean, I think that I, I mean, I've got a lot of thoughts on it. I think that um, if you have like a strong presence of personality on video, you can definitely get away with it. I think I, I, I do look at it like on YouTube, there's probably like a hundred different ways to grow. Mm -hmm. Like I, you know, I, a beauty YouTuber has a totally different skill set than like I do or Simvicta does. And then like some guy who builds homemade crossbows and like shoots them off has a totally different skill set than I do. But I think like for what I do, um, I, I, or what we do, I look at it almost as like, there's two different ways to grow. And one of them is like, make really, really good content within the scope of the video. So no matter what game you're playing, you're trying hard to be entertaining and succeeding. And then the other one is you kind of are like a surfer riding the waves of whatever is popular and i think both are i think you can dabble in both and make both popular in their own way without being scummy but the thing about being a surfer and being like oh this game's popular i'm gonna ride it for a bit then we're gonna do like you know uh one of those jelly videos that i have no idea why they're popular eating all the the jelly candies and stuff like that then we're gonna you know you get the idea is you're kind of like when you're riding like that i think you're vulnerable to the trends as well if somebody plays the algorithm better than you they're gonna they're gonna take you out and you're not gonna have a community of people that are sticking around because they actually enjoyed this stuff in the first place so i i like building the other way first off because i don't know how to build it the algorithmic way really um but secondarily i think even if it's a little slower and sometimes not growing at all the people you do get that stick around are actually there for you so, you know, when you stop playing Spelunky, a lot of them will watch whatever you do next. Yeah, I think you hit the, what really appealed to me is what you said is like, it's the slow way of doing it. Like, you know, uh, taking a Sinvicta, like when I saw you did 900 plus episodes of Isaac, I mean, clearly you've done thousands, but here's someone that's done 900 and it's worked, right? And so like that, you can't make 900 episodes in one day and post it. Like it's just, it's time and it's just consistency. And so I think that's what, appealed to me most is that because I think it's maybe I don't want to say it's a more difficult way than kind of not gaming YouTube but it's like it's not an easy trudge which I I like that and so that's something that really kind of is something that's in my forefront now that I'm I'm really focusing on on YouTube because you know Twitch is going really well but like I said it's always like that that bar stool and, and my YouTube leg I need to grow it a little bit and but it's good and and, and um so yes, that was the W of the week is just like not only having the consistency, but then realizing the importance of like the long-term journey there and being consistent. Cause I, I wouldn't say like I jumped from wave to wave on YouTube because I never was like looking to play the most popular game, but I definitely jumped from game to game when like, I don't know, when numbers would like piddle or something like that. So, but anyway, so from that to, uh, to your multi-month process, what was it? eight, six months from start to finish? So I, I actually checked. It, it happened pretty quick. I have like a, a note app on my phone mm -hmm. and I wrote in it on like February 18th or something like that. I was like, we should get some merch going, but like do it in a different way than just launching like a, you know, a Teespring campaign. So yeah, for, for context, I haven't done merch in like five years. And we talked about it on an earlier podcast. Mm -hmm. I don't remember the number, but it was probably like three or four weeks ago. The way we wanted to do merch is we got cool new branding from Jay, who's also known as Wolves of My Door on, on Twitch and YouTube and everywhere. And um, we were like, how are we going to do this in a way? Like the, the pillars of what I wanted was like, it's got to look cool. Not like it, it doesn't have to be designer stuff, but I don't want it to just be like a cartoon bald guy on a shirt where you'd be as an adult, you'd be a little embarrassed to be out and be seen in it. You know, I don't want you to have to compromise looking 
somewhat stylish just to be like, I support this guy. Um, and then secondarily, not like good quality of merch as well. And also not like 70 or even 60 bucks for a hoodie. So we, in order to do that, we had to do things a little bit differently. So uh, Jay knows a, a printer that he can work with that basically got us the, the ability to get bulk discounts. And the risk on our end was, you know, we, we lose a little bit of money if it doesn't sell. We launched it on Tuesday and it sold <laughs> <laughs> and like, like crazy, you know. We got three different hats, a shirt, um, two different hoodies, and it's go. It's a very simple store. It's running for a week, and it's going like insanely well. So, um, so yeah. I'm gonna pause there in terms of your input. So you had input. So the design was presented to you. I know we talked a little bit about this. So I just want to get in for con context. You had say on the final design. You're like, hey Jay, do this, and you're like, yeah, this looks good. You know, I'm, there wasn't much back and forth. I'm guessing. Yeah, well, I mean, I've talked about this with Jay even like as recently as last night. I'm art deficient. I don't know. I don't know art. I don't know design. I know what I think looks good, but I'm also smart enough to know that what I think looks good is not necessarily something that looks good to the masses or, you know, basically I try, Jay's a stylish guy and he's good with design and branding. So, you know, I, I went with his feedback and said, this looks perfect to me. And whenever he had a suggestion, I, I took it under advisement and really he handled 100% of the operations mm -hmm. side of things. All, all I'm there for is marketing and having the brand in the first place. So it's really like Kate and I were talking about it. We're like, it's a, it's a great business arrangement is that I essentially it's, it's a huge win-win. You know, we were able to do merch cooler and better because Jay was involved. And it also for Jay gives him the opportunity a for his own stuff to get exposed to a wider audience, but B like he's, we're just to be frank, like he's making way more off this than we thought was going to be likely in the first place. And how do you feel about that? Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not, I, I am very realistic about it as well. Like the, the numbers that we've done so far are absolutely insane, like out of control. But I also understand this is not normal. Like uh, this is five years of pent up desire for merch all getting out within like, you know, a week. So it's, it's doing, it's, we're not basically like, Hey, we launched merch and out of nowhere, it's exploded. It's like, people have been asking for this for a long time. And then that combined with the merch being really cool looking and reasonably priced, although international shipping is like definitely the number one piece of feedback we've gotten that I'm sympathetic to as well. Um, like, I understand that's why the numbers are, are high, but also, you know, something like this. I mean, we, Jay and I were talking last night and we're like, thank God we actually pivoted off of the, we were originally only going to offer like 300 <laughs> of each unit. Right. And some of the stuff has sold like, like 700 units already in two days. So we're, we're really glad that we actually didn't go with the way that we were originally going to do it. Um, but it, it, it keeps us going. Like now we're talking about like when, when this is over, we got to wait for make sure fulfillment goes well. I know people have already gotten some notifications that their stuff is shipping, which is great. I didn't actually expect it to start going out that fast. But like once it's done and in the books, we'll start to talk about maybe doing another refresh for like winter or, or later in the autumn. And the cool thing is, you know, this stuff, we could always rotate it back in. So if you don't get it now, there's a chance like the stuff that was really popular can can come back for sure. But we can also start to work in new designs, like maybe once every six months and and just keep offering new stuff and new stuff. Not be, not just to like financially capitalize on the audience, but as the opportunity to, you know, offer something to the audience that they might be interested in. And, uh, you know, if, if that's the thing with merch. If you don't want to pick it up, don't pick it up. But if you, uh, I mean, let me put it this way. You and I, I think you and I are on the same page here. Like when somebody gives out like 10 gift subs, I'm like, you're not getting anything. <laughs> <laughs> you're only get. you're, you're doing something nice for me and I appreciate it. Um, but you're just really like spending money to get praise in some way. Whereas, you know, if you were going to spend 50 bucks, I think maybe it's more viable for you to spend 50 bucks and get like two shirts or a shirt and a hat or a hoodie or something like that. So that, that's the way I choose to look at it is, is like, it's another optional way to support, but this one actually offers like a material good as well. That hopefully looks cool. So I want to talk to to your level of comfort, right? Just whatever you want to talk yeah, about. Yeah. So your, your expect, like 
you versus the merch she told you about what were your expectations right. versus what happened like you don't if you don't don't give numbers if you want to but just like yeah, give yeah. some context so it's like hey we're supposed to have like whatever um well like the way i would say that as of right now and it's only been two days but um, admittedly it's gonna those two days are gonna be equal to the next five yeah. you know in all likelihood but um i would say as of right now we've sold like four to five times more than we expected to sell with the limited run, which is why both Jay and I are messaging each other. Like Jay messaged me and he's like, I've been talking to the printer just to make sure they're okay. Cause like they, they've been doing bulk orders for like companies, but at the same time, they probably didn't expect this many to come in over the course of a couple of days, but it seems like it's going okay over there. Um, so yeah, I mean, if you want to put like a proportion on it without getting into real yeah. numbers is probably like, I would say four to five times better than, than we expected. So, and like, you know, Ryan, when Ryan launched it, we talked about it and I'm like, Hey, how's it going? And you know, without revealing anything, like he's doing like num like numbers, which has got to, number one, it's got to feel good. But, but two, it's like, um, when you, when you saw that happen, what was your initial response? Like, were you like, Oh, this is cool. Or you like, Oh, I can't believe this or, Oh, I should have done this I, three years ago. Yeah. <laughs> no, I guess it's, uh, I mean, it's just flattering, I guess is, is one. Cause like, you know, anytime that we're in, right, when we talk about our business, you know, there's like barriers to entry in a sense, people will watch you for free that, especially on YouTube, that's like 90% of your audience minimum are people that are like, I'll tune in for free. Then, you know, on Twitch, if you look at the chat, every time I see a badge, I'm like, Whoa, that's like, somebody likes the content enough that they've thought that it was worth paying five bucks. And maybe they thought it was worth paying five bucks 72 times in a <laughs> row, which is just insane to me. But with the merch, you know, it's, it's a more expensive, like one time purchase. So you never know, which is why we kept our expectations somewhat low. We're like, especially, you know, it's an uncertain time. Uh, you know, what, what percentage of people that watch are going to have, you know, 50 bucks to, to spend right now and it turns out the answer is like a lot more than we thought so <laughs> so it, it is it, it's it's flattering more than anything else but it's also like i feel like super vindicated and and both jay and i were talking about this in the back channel like i'm like the branding's good <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and we, we've had it for a year now we went through the the turbulence where everybody was like i don't understand why the the brand looks like this now and then we sold the merch and you know tons of people were like oh now i like i totally understand and it looks super cool and i, I think both of us are kind of like not not saying i told you so but we we feel vindicated in our original confidence that it was a cool redesign to begin with yeah and i have to think back it, it might have been like when did you rebrand? I'm trying to think if we have that podcast or not, where we talked about the, I think we must have talked about it, the backlash. Well, it was June of 2019. Okay. So it, it was it was pre-Check the Wire, but I think we did, we've talked about it on the show before, I think. Probably when we talked about thumbnails, it was like the same thing. Yeah. So like basically you said, anytime there's a change, you know, but for you, this is like, all right, hey, look, if you didn't like it, that's okay. There's five X people that we thought were liked it really love it enough to buy it and and that's you know you talked about you wanted to design something that like wouldn't be that you'd be okay wearing out and so like the second because i saw it in chat so it, it went live when we were doing team unity and i saw it went live in chat and like i had seen some like you'd show me some of the stuff or i'd seen like uh, i don't know what i saw but i saw something i didn't see the whole moosh boosh but when i when i logged in i'm like okay like most of this stuff like it wasn't it was an easy decision it wasn't like uh let me try to find something that mm -hmm. i can like support ryan and buy and be like oh yeah like i was the stuff i bought i was excited to buy because i'm like i could wear this out and people are just be like oh it's you know some brand not like you know gamer dude holding controller you know whatever so but but for me when i went to make the decision it wasn't like it was like there were multiple options and you're like all right hey like it was i don't know i just felt like it was and the whole experience i think was really well done and for you i got to imagine was there any hesitation or, and, and this is nothing against jay but just for you like i know you like to maintain control over a lot of stuff was there any hesitation saying like hey look i'm just gonna kind of let the reins go and take a gamble on this yes and no i mean there's some 
I mean, there's still some anxiety. The anxiety is no longer like, will the website work? The web, uh, the the anxiety is more like until it ends up in like people's hands. You know, you're going to be worried about the orders being fulfilled. And after it ends up in people's hands, you know, and they wear it, do they like it? And then after they wash it once, you know, did it maintain <laughs> its original shape and feel? Which is why we went through the sample stuff to begin with to make sure that it should, you know. But um, I, this was one of those times where I was really like, you know, I I trusted Jay, and I think Jay made like a very professional pitch for lack of a better word. And is also, you know, he has a track record of doing it with other content creators. So I think it made the choice pretty easy at, at the end of the day. It helps like, like I literally have no idea. And I think this is why most streamers just go with Teespring or, you know, designed by humans or something like that. We don't know what we're doing in this, in this realm. Most people don't at least. So, you know, you want to partner with somebody that, knows what they're doing operationally and can just kind of piggyback like you they do everything and they piggyback off the brand for marketing you know and uh i i would much rather do it with jay where you know really both of us are coming out ahead instead of doing it with a, a larger company that i think i don't want to say they're more <laughs> in it for themselves but you know they it, don't know you yeah, and it's obfuscated you know like when you run through a store like that you don't know like maybe the the unit cost per shirt is like 12 bucks. So you got to sell it at 20 to make eight. Um, but you don't know, like on design by humans and not just to use an example, I have yeah. no problem with design by humans, but you know, how, how much of that cost is the cost of the materials and how much of that cost is what's actually, you know, going into design by humans pocket. And I, they should be making money off of it because they're providing a service, but you know, by being able to work with someone that is, has a little bit more of a, a local or personal connection with the distributor in the first place, you know, we, we can figure out where those numbers are and where we're comfortable with it. So I want to talk about, so did you physically on your end, did you, so you had the merch while, did you wash it a couple times and try it or how did you oh, yeah, do yeah, the yeah. QA testing on your end? I mean, I didn't, I didn't do testing to the extent of like, you know, 40 know washes. yeah, I'm not going to dry the shirt 40 times. Cause like at, at that point, it's more like, like I know the brands of the shirts that came in, we got like four different brands. And uh, it was really just, I did a couple of things. I wore all of them. And I was like, like, because people have different preferences. I, I'm not a, a huge t-shirt guy, but I know that there are people that are and people have different preferences. Like I like um, the, I like the way a 100% cotton shirt fits and feels. It's like, but, that, would you say it's more like starchy or sti like yeah, static? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like a harder shirt. Yeah but it does worse in the after it gets dried and after it gets washed for sure and it fades a little bit faster but a 100 cotton shirt is actually like the cheapest hmm. type of shirt that you can get so then we had like cotton polyester blends and uh we ended up going with something that's like like not 50 50 but i think it's mostly uh cotton and a little bit polyester so it's like a little softer but it does better in the wash and i think most people like prefer the feel of a of a blend as well <laughs> yeah when you said like 100 percent cotton i'm thinking like 1990s red wings Burlap. Cha championship yeah. shirt you know something yeah. like that. <laughs> but uh, no so okay so then my other question for you is uh, the pro uh, tell me about the the bad side not bad side but problem stuff you're running into now i'd be like oh i would do this a little bit different or oh taking this feedback into account for next time not like oh this is going bad but like hey this is something i didn't know that I now know after going through the process. The number one, the only thing, and by far the number one thing by default, I guess, is international shipping. Like in the US, shipping is good. Mm. It's not a problem at all, very reasonable. I mean, you can't compete with Amazon, obviously, <laughs> just by, like, it's not realistic. But, um, you know, international shipping, it sucks. You know, you're, you're paying, if you're ordering like one thing, the order is gonna be like 40% higher just because of the fact that they're shipping it internationally. The problem is like, I don't know how to maintain the advantage we have in terms of like being able to make good merch on good quality products at a reasonable price, um, which is really tied to having like one central printer and distributor. Like, I don't know how we maintain that advantage in the future, but also have a solution where international shipping is cheaper, which I think would require there to be like, a warehouse in you know in germany or, or in poland or something like that i especially and this is biased admittedly but i'm like canadian shipping price is much higher than i would like considering the fact that we're adjacent to america <laughs> like 
it it always gets me that like you know these are printed in like on the east coast but to get it to toronto costs way more than it does to go geographically so much further and send it to like california um but it's something that's like it's just hard to it's hard to handle really at the end of the day we 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 don't have the scale where we're like we we're not a worldwide enterprise where obviously i mean it, it's i'm not even trying to justify it i think it's just obvious like it's it's hard to to figure out how to solve that problem when you're maybe do, running like two sales a year and yeah. uh and you don't know what the numbers are going to be like before the first one at least especially yeah it could be interesting to see when it all shakes out like if there's <clears throat> say 40 percent is purchased in the uk then i mean you maybe have to consider some options because then if say 40 percent of the people are buying it from the uk how many people are not because of the shipping cost you know what i mean like yeah. I, I think after you get this data i think it could be interesting to see what if any options there are that you have i'm sure there's all kinds of options it's just a matter of the best way to do it um and then and i would also yeah. just just to put a cap on this i would also say like i've gotten probably like a couple of dozen tweets from people that are like uh you know i wanted to buy it but like the shipping cost to germany or the shipping cost to like finland was just too expensive and like that's perfectly acceptable. Yeah. Like I'm not looking at that and going like, oh, you know, they're in it. <laughs> bite, yeah, bite the bullet, blocked, right? <laughs> I'm looking at that. I'm like, I completely understand it. Especially like we the the culture, or at least like what I'm used to, is like free shipping. When I buy something, if shipping's like six ninety nine, I'm like, what year is it, right? Because I'm so used to Amazon Prime being able to get something to my door in like a day for free or for like a monthly fee that's pretty small that the idea of just paying for shipping at all is like a little bit old school. Um, so like 100%, I totally understand. And I, I hope that we can come to some something in the future that is amenable, not just so that we make more money on the merch, but also so that people that like pe people are like emotional, not a, not upset, but they're like, I want this, but I just can't justify it. And the way I look at that is like, if we can start to give them a reason to give them less reasons to say no then everybody ends up happier as a result so then the last thing i want to ask you is, is talk about on your end the decision to ha only sell it for seven days like for some listing that that may not make sense to or why you decided to do it or why you know the information you had to do it that way as opposed to leave it up forever what is your what did you learn from that or what made you make that decision well, there's a, there's a few things. And I, I think it comes down to a, a few marketing things and a few operations things. In order for us to keep, and I, I keep hammering this point, not, not to be a salesman, but I'm like, the merch is cheap. Uh, the hoodie is like 35 bucks mm -hmm. US. If you look at other merch stores, not to throw any other content creators under the bus, but hoodies are 40, 50, 80. If you're getting into really, really high-end stuff from other content creators, you could get over 100 bucks, right? Um, so the, the way that one of the ways we're able to keep prices that low and still make it worth on our end is that basically Jay talked to the, the printer and was like, do we get a discount if basically we take over the printing of this whole place for like a week? Whereas if we, if we did it for year round or three months or indefinitely, like it would cost us more per hoodie to print each hoodie. So we'd probably, to justify it, we'd have to sell it for like, you know, 50 bucks maybe. So that's one reason operationally. Another reason operationally is so that it's like busy and then it's done, you know? As soon as the orders are fulfilled and the customer service is handled on that stuff, we're out of it, you know? We don't have, we don't constantly have an influx of new tickets coming in and then like, you know, fulfillment going out. And then the, the other side of it is definitely marketing as well you know i think if you have a store like mouth when he opened his store and then, again i use this not as a like to another, say that, like, another way, case study yeah. exactly yeah. It's, it's just like an a b test or like a, a comparison but like when mouth opened his store i was like oh i'm gonna buy a hat i didn't buy a hat until like 14 months later because i knew that it was gonna be there right <laughs> eventually i did buy the hat but i think by keeping it open for only a week people are like i need to make a decision you know right <laughs> away not not to like force people to get it when they should like to coerce them to get it. But like, you know, if you have the means and you want it, you don't go, ah, I'll just get it like a month from now. You get it like all 
within that first week. See, I don't know if you and I didn't talk about it, but like <clears> in the middle of the team unity stream, I'm like trying to buy it. I'm like, oh, this is going to sell out. I'm like, forget the stream. I'm like, let me get this, get this. And, and then, because I thought, I thought you had like a limited run, but instead, yeah, yeah. instead of, it is a, it's, it's like limited time, not necessarily limited run. Right. So like, yeah. Okay. And we're not, we're not marketing it. Like get it now before it's put <laughs> in the Disney vault forever. We probably won't, we're not going to run another sale of this stuff as it looks right now. And like, you know, just in a month from now, launch it again. But some of the pieces might come back. We already got the designs and, you know, just by definition, maybe like two years from now, people are like, oh, I missed out on that. You know, here's a greatest hits collection where you can look for stuff to buy. We're not trying to be like, if you don't get like the <laughs> Fortnite store when it first came out, right? You got 23 hours <laughs> to decide if you want this skin, it might never come back. We don't even know what's coming tomorrow. Um, so we're not trying to market it on scarcity, but we are putting it out there to be like, it's only available for a week. So, you know, I'm not trying to push people to, you know, don't miss your chance. I'm more like, you have a few days. If you want it, get it. If you don't, you know, or you can't, I understand as well. And I feel like I haven't really seen you market it at all on your social media presence. Like I've been watching your streams. Like what's your take on how you're going to market it as an individual? Like, do you have like, Oh, I'm going to make sure I tweet on Saturday or whatever. Like, how are you approaching that? Well, I tweeted like that day. Mm -hmm. And then like yesterday, I just forgot, but I've been, I've been promoting it on, on every stream. I think uh, I, I should tweet like once a day. Jay even worked up like, and he's such a good person to work with. Here, here's a piece of actionable advice. If you get the chance to work with Jay, I would highly recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh he worked up like a little like a, a cool graphic that had all the pieces lined up and you know it, all i had to do basically was tweet it with a link and and a little bit of copy so you know I'm, I'm gonna keep cycling that out but again it's not really like like we're not at this position it's already so far and above the expectations that we expected we're not like let's milk them you know <laughs> let's get a let's get as many people in as possible it's really at this point more like Let's make sure, because we've talked about this before. Everything you tweet out, even if like 50,000 people see it, like 300,000 people don't see it. But then if you tweet it at like 2 a.m., another 10,000 people will see it and be like, oh, I almost missed it, right? So I think I should definitely this week and tweet, out, tweet it out a few times just to make sure that we've, we've at least hit as many people as we can hit and we can't. Because I'll tell you, like a week from now, if, if people are like, I didn't know you were selling merch, I'm going to be like, I don't want them to have the excuse i want to be like oh i promoted it here and here and here and here are you gonna do a youtube video or splice it into a youtube video so your youtube audience knows i mean i probably should but i, I don't think i will <laughs> <laughs> so be the, so when the youtube people come back like, i didn't know your son merch you'd be like it kind of got you i'm just i'm just saying <laughs> uh, just the, the youtube people out there look that are watching this live on youtube.com mm. i'm looking out for you because it's by true, the time yeah. this well, by the time this video comes out, but this is assuming they're going to watch the Check the Wire podcast, which they may or may not. I'm just saying, uh, like, could be I know I'm with you. Hey, I, definitely, I, I definitely should, but I don't know. It's one of those things where, and this is it's an instinct that I have to get over. I don't like to sell, really, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Offering a product is sales, but like, uh, I don't I don't like to be the guy that's like you know use. I don't like to tell people to use my Epic Creator code. I would rather just play Man Eater and then like after the video's been live for a day, go look at it and go like, oh, holy crap, people like that one. Um, I, I I think that it's, it's one of those things where like you're already doing well. It feels weird to kind of like market it further. But I also think that that's counterintuitive because this is a situation where you're not really asking for like, donations is more of a situation where you're like i'm offering something that you actually might be interested in yeah and i think i think for you it's like uh i mean i'm not gonna tell you how to think or feel but like you got a short window of time you put all this work into it and it's like okay twitch knows twitter knows youtube and unless like you i'm sure you have people that just watch what I, you on isaac only on youtube that's it nowhere else and maybe not follow you on twitter and like that person will never know and i think part you know the way i look at it's like it's if someone doesn't know like anything, something I'm doing, it's my fault. Like someone says, oh, I don't know you stream on Twitch. I would love you. I'm big brother. I'm like, well, I've had eight years to, to reach this person. I haven't done a good enough job. And, and I think it's, it's, it's kind of like you said, it's, it's a little different too. It's not like you're like, hey, please, you have to buy my merch. It's like, hey, it's here. If you want it, enjoy it. 
if not then it's all good um, yeah no I, I understand i mean it, it sounds uh this is a humble brag for sure but i'm also like it's coming out at like a good clip right now but in a way artificially limiting the supply by not pushing the marketing hard on youtube might make fulfillment like smoother <laughs> instead <laughs> of uh cuz i I, I don't binding. Yes, yeah. exactly. Like, I don't think that what would happen is I would t like mention it in an Isaac episode and orders would like go up tenfold. But I also didn't think this would happen in the first place. So I, I'm, I mean, my my hot take on is I think if you put it on YouTube where a, a core of your audience is, I think you're going to get a, a number with an X on the orders. I'm just like, that's yeah. my opinion. I mean, and there's only one way to test it. But the other thing I want to talk about, too, is because you said like, you, you don't like to be salesy and ask. And, and if people like you guys, people know I joke around a lot, but like all the time, it's, but, but especially during Team Uni Tuesday, like I know Ryan's like that. I know anyone like if he were to come on and be like during the Team Uni Tuesday and be like, buy my merch, me, Melf and, and Austin be like, yeah, that's fine. But like, you know, to me, I look at it, it's kind of like our job, like to help him in that moment sell and let people know because it just it sounds better not coming from ryan you know so when it's very true it just does <laughs> and it's like but i mean for me it wasn't like a ploy it's like i was genuinely excited but at the same time i know like dude i know how much work you've put into this how much jay's put into it and it's like you're not going to be like hey hashtag or exclamation point merch in my chat buy it now but you know so it's i don't know i think there's value in that in you know just kind of like taking the the road you go of not like overselling or anything like that because it just be, it seems more genuine and you know but at the same time i think it, it's an interesting line for you to walk because it is something you're wildly proud of you put a lot of work into it and you want people to know but you also don't want to you know do the fortnite skin route so I, it, it's cool i i, I think <laughs> it's uh it, i'm number one it's what i told you on the back jump super happy for you because it's kind of like i don't know I, at the same time let me ask how much do you think of like five years of do you think if you would have done this four years ago or three years ago, it'd be the same way? I think with the old branding, it would have done a lot worse, <laughs> which is like, again, it's not a knock on the old branding. I just think like the amount of people who are like, I don't want to buy this, the, the current merch. Cause like it had, I don't know, it's kanji or something like that. And yeah. they're like, I don't like the idea that you're using like the Japanese language to look cool. I feel like the, the number of those people is very small compared to the amount of people especially like as my audience gets older and like more professional like they they move up occupationally they're like you know i don't want to wear a t-shirt with a cartoon ball guy's head on it like just not because they don't want to support but because like there's no, they would not rather gonna wear it that, yeah at that <laughs> point they would rather just like buy a gift subscription or something like that because it it's worth more than like a shirt that's going to be garbage in a couple of years like i have so much streamer merch or i have had let me put it that way and i just like after like a year i just recycle it or I, like i donated to like big brother or something or big brothers or something like that um because i'm like it's not a knock on their merch but like i don't want to wear like a mathis pip boy shirt out and like you know i'm 31 <laughs> I, yeah. like it's it's not that i'm worried about explaining it to other people i'm just kind of like i'm i'm in my opinion, it doesn't look right on me. It doesn't feel right to be just wearing like a graphic t-shirt out in public. But people have obviously different preferences on that stuff. But I think I think that it was a combination of like this, like it's a long time since we last did merch. That's part of it. Um, and I, I think that the new branding is synergistic with that. And then the way that we're running it is good as well. So like... I think that uh, I think that it's really like a perfect storm. Like everything came together. Like I, I super I this. There's no way to match this campaign if we did like another campaign in November, right? Like the, I have no belief in my. If you made the design 200 out of 10, we won't move the same amount of units just because like some of the appetite will have been satiated by this. But I do think that like it's all going to do better than just like a limit or like an unlimited run of, uh, of just like my avatar. Yeah, no. And it, cause I know some people may, may want to know, but when I went to Northern lion dot shop, like what you talked about, like being able to not wear a cartoon person, like in particular, I had that thought in my head when deciding between like the zip up hoodie, which definitely has some, some more sauce to it versus there's a hoodie with like, uh, 
a logo that's embroidered, I'm like, okay, which one of these can I get? Cause I don't buy, I really buy nothing. Like I, like I, I'm super simple. I don't buy clothes. I don't, you know, I'm just, I buy the same shirts. So I'm like, which one can I buy that is going to elicit the least amount of attention or be like, what is this? And like <laughs> that I like that. And that that's how I am. I don't know that I'm necessarily your target audience, but I'm like, what could I wear like this fall around a campfire and just be like, people would walk by and be like, Oh, like if they know they're pogged up, but if they don't know, there's like, Oh, is that a new like local Michigan brand or something? So that's how like I made my decision. And, uh, but I, I don't know. I, I think it's cool. And I think anyone that, um, that bought stuff, I think is going to be, it's not like you're only going to wear it at, you know, packs or whatever, yeah. the next con. It's like, you can just wear it day to day. And, and to me, like, if it wasn't like that, if it was like a cartoon guy, I probably like, I would have bought some and then I probably never, <laughs> yeah. Well, I would have yeah. given it away the community and I probably wouldn't have hyped up the store as much because I mean, at the same time too, it's like, not that I don't want you to do well, but like, you know, like I would have said something, but I wouldn't have been as excited because it's not something that I would wear, but if it's something I would wear and use and like, then I'm, I'm always going to like gas it up. So I don't know. I think it's and, been, yeah, go ahead. Right, just to be positive about yeah. the mouse design by yeah. human store. Cause I know like <laughs> if it feels, cause I use them as an example so much, it might feel like I'm like, I learned so much from how not to do things, but actually the big lesson from that for me was in that mouth i think does his store properly from a design standpoint if that makes sense like he doesn't just have shirts that are like his logo he worked with an artist to make shirts that are like that a he likes and are kind of evocative of his branding but if you wore it out in public you don't know that it's like forgive the term but like cringy streamer merchandise so i think the 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 capstone that i would want to put on this is like i don't want to be a streamer who like is a shirt salesman. Like I don't want to stream to sell shirts, but if we're going to sell merch, I don't want to just sell merch with my face on it. So someone could buy it for 25 bucks and be like, look, I supported you. I want to sell good merch that is really like you're buying a product that is actually wearable outside and you're supporting me. Like, I think, I think both parties can win in this situation. And I think the way that a lot of content creators end up doing merch is they just kind of like slap their branding on a t-shirt and then they're like okay now there's merch so like you can you you can support me in that sense in the way that we're doing it this way instead and i, I think it's the way that mouth does it on designed by humans as well we're just using different distribution channels is that if we're gonna do it do it right and if we're not gonna do it right then then wait until we can do it right so yeah. i think i think that's what we succeeded on yeah, and for you, like, and for, I don't think there is a right way, but for you, there was a right. Like, you're you have a right way. Malf has like, there's there's a million ways to do it. And I think, yeah, you know, I, I think the most important thing is that you know you were happy with the process. You can like stand by everything. Speaking of that, like, what are you doing with like customer? So, like, have you talked about like customer support, how that happens, and then what? Like, I don't want to like, and this is not where yeah, I normally yeah. cover, but rain. <laughs> let me be Mr. Rain cover a second. What if like some stuff goes bunk? Have you thought about that or like? Maybe there's like a 30 run bad order. Have you thought about it? Yeah, yeah. Like in the abstract, for sure. Like uh, the the way the, the portal that it uses handles like payment refunding and processing and stuff like that. So on, on an, again, to use the O word a lot, like operations, that stuff is streamlined and handled. But like, yeah, of course, there's the chance that like the merch shows up for whatever reason and it's like garbage. Like if people put it on and they like bend their arm and their elbow pops out of the hoodie, that's bad and like assuming we see like widespread proof of that we'll eat the cost yeah for sure you know and then like again i mean it's the same way you treat income as a business like or even on a personal level like before you pay tax like, it's not my money yet <laughs> like i don't need i haven't even gotten it for one but that you know once it's all handled that'll happen but it, I'm, it's not like i'm gonna get paid for the merch and be like in you know <laughs> we're buying tesla right like it's gonna be there kind of like not legally in escrow, but it's going to be there in principle in case there's like a massive quality issue. And we could be like, okay, how are we going to make this right? You know, maybe that means the distributor refunds the people that want refunds. And then we pay the distributor back for the, you know, what, what they have paid out to people. But, um, you know, it, yeah, it, it's, it's a reality. It doesn't really bother me. Cause I'm just like, it's, you know, it's just business. Yeah. But I, th but I think it's, it's interesting to hear that you've thought about it and it's not like you've already gone out and planned, you know, 
three gold yeah, Lamborghinis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because, uh, you know, I, I'm sure, like, even because the way I look at it is that say that there's something went wrong, you got a choice. Either you do the right thing and everyone will be okay and happy, like, they'll be happy with it. Or yeah, you're just yeah. like, deuces, I'm out. And you're like, torch and bridges left and right. You know, it's and, not, it's not worth the merge say i mean it, first off it's the wrong thing to do so it wouldn't feel good um but secondarily like it's not worth torching your whole reputation obviously <laughs> just to just to run away with the merch money uh but i do think it, it's kind of one of my my tenants or pillar pillar thoughts about doing stuff online is essentially what you just did is is like you do all the work and then somewhere down the road you monetize but i believe like the longer that you can hold out but the longer you can hold out to monetize, the better it's going to be for you, right? So it's not like you didn't come out day one or your first YouTube video, like, hey, buy my shirt. It's like, yeah, you, you built, you did all the hard work. And then it's like, okay, hey, when it feels right to monetize or provide a product or something, you do that. And I, and I feel like that's, you know, doing stuff in that fashion is, for me, it's always the right way to do stuff. And I think this is an example of proving that, right? Not that... I don't know. And there's a million ways to do it, but I, I just feel very strongly about that is, you know, this, to me, this was more than the way I look at it, it was more than just like a cool design or like cool branding. It's like, that's a element of it, but it's also, you've had this community that you've worked so hard to do right by and not, you know, I'm sure you've had millions of opportunities to squeeze them for every penny they're worth. Like, oh, here, <laughs> here's an affiliate deal. We'll, we'll give you a bag up front and 50% of every, you know, software purchase. But you yeah. know, not, I'm not, and look, I'm not judging anyone that does that. Everyone has their own scenarios, but the fact that you didn't do that, you know, I think it's, it's cool that essentially you're rewarded for that in the end game. <laughs> like, have, yeah. you, have you ever, I, go ahead. No. You know, I, I, first off, I would say, I appreciate it. And I think you and I are on the same page. We, like, we never, and I mean, everybody that we work with is like this. Yeah. We don't go live on stream and like once an hour, like an alarm goes off and we're like, please use your Twitch Prime subscriptions right now, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, like we, we don't just take whatever monetization opportunities are available and like bang that drum over and over. So we really like, I know I said that I'm hesitant to be like salesy. This is really like the one time that I'm less, as little hesitant as I could ever be. Cause I'm like, we never ask, like we never do the <laughs> ask. We only do the ask once every few years where we, we say like, hey, I've been, you know, releasing six videos a day on YouTube for free. Obviously, some people have YouTube premium and I appreciate it. We've been doing streams and, you know, if you subscribe, great. If you don't subscribe, also great. I'm glad you're watching, but you could totally watch for free. This is the one time since like 2015 that I'm going to start selling this. And if you don't want it, that's cool too. But if you want it and you want to support, this is a really good way to do it right now. Yeah, and that's the thing I was trying to think. Like, I couldn't think of you ever at like i had a, i couldn't think of you ever making an ask like in my brain i'm like i don't know if he's ever asked anything from his community you know sometimes you just make a joke about subscribing and then like people subscribe <laughs> <laughs> it's an ask in a in a way um but yeah like we don't we're it, it, us as a community and i i mean like you and myself and team unity and the nlss and etc cetera, etc cetera, it's not like we we don't promote very much we promote our own brand. And yeah. I think that even that's a struggle, like telling people to subscribe and like the video and, you know, incentivizing people to comment and stuff like that. But like in terms of actually asking for money is essentially never. So, yeah. and it, it wouldn't even, it would take a lot for me to get to the point where I am just asking for subscriptions. Cause I feel like that's, I don't want to call it a raw deal because it's like very important <laughs> to my bottom line. But at the same time, I'm like, you get emotes and like a sense of helping out. But this is like a real, you can hold it in your hands like you're getting a good. So this is one of the times where I'm like this. I, I don't feel bad about marketing this at all, I guess. All right. So so to, to, to wrap up the merch stuff. So as so when's the final? When is the cutoff day? Uh, June 2nd. Which is, you know, it's like a Tuesday. Tuesday. Okay, yeah, Tuesday. Yeah. And then so it's cut off. And then from there, just to finish us through the process, then what happens next? So it's cut off, it's fulfilled. And then when do you feel like you're gonna be okay? Hey, look, I'm done. Like this this was a great project. The project is mm. finished. Uh like realistically, it's probably ninety-eight percent done mm. when orders start ending up in people's hands. Okay. You know, is it, it there's always the chance that like you said like some batch could not take right but that's not going to be 
as as soon as people start opening up and posting pictures of it, I'm like, well, they're not all scuffed <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> ideally right so you know maybe there's a bad run for a bit and you could deal with that so you're never like totally out of the woods so to speak but i think like as soon as people at, at first i was like oh man like as soon as orders start to ship it's going to be like less anxiety inducing and it was when i heard people say they got notifications that shipping has started to happen um but then the next step for sure is like all the orders are shipped and then like some of them have arrived and then most of them have arrived and then whatever little customer service stuff comes up, you know, that's, I, I think it, it's unrealistic to be like, we're going to hit a hundred percent, like at this date, you know, you, you know, some people might be, Hey, I was, uh, I got it shipped to my PO box. I didn't check it for three months. And then I checked it and it's busted, you know? <laughs> so I don't think we're ever going to get a hundred percent, but to get to like a reasonable level, I don't think it should take much longer than like, like a month from, tuesday from when it started hopefully cool well i know I, I can say on my end i know a lot of people uh especially in the community have been are super happy for you and, and glad that it went well glad there are no major problems and uh you can check it out northern lion dot shop dot shop if you listen to this live audio you probably have eight hours left to buy it depending on when the, when the cutoff is if you're watching this on youtube you got a couple days but then it's gone forever um so I, I, let me ask you as we wrap stuff up here and, and go to some live q a what's what else is on this mythical uh note app of yours if it was merch oh, oh dude yeah let me let me pull it out here yeah. hold on it takes me a second because i'm 100 years old um well i like i wrote ideas in this so I have a grocery list as well. All right, February 21st. Why make my own merch when I could reach out to an existing uh, infrastructure that might want to collaborate, you know? So that's basically the genesis of that. Um, be more specific about goals. 1,500 likes on this episode, et cetera. Mm. Which, you know, that's obviously for a while we were running that. And it didn't end up being like, that's not what I have ended up doing. But it did end up blossoming into what I ended up doing, which was telling people why I think they should subscribe. Uh, red border around thumbnail got implemented and then iterated upon to become better. Uh, and then the other thing was knock the subscriber milestones out of the park, which was the idea that is like, if I'm going to use these subscriber milestones as like a carrot on a stick, when I get to them, don't like half ass them, hmm. like make sure like I'm giving people more than they expect. So they're like, oh, I didn't I didn't I subscribed. So you'd play smash, but then you played smash for like 15 minutes and had a bad attitude, you know, so <laughs> give it give people more than they expect out of that stuff. That's uh, basically what it came down to. I'm going to make a prediction here. I think I don't know when, but I think after you do a couple merch drops, I yeah. think I could see you pairing with a. When you have, when you show the numbers with Jay, I think Jay is going to go to X company, B company, C company. I could see you doing like a collaboration. I, 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 that, that's my prediction in the next 720 days. I think that'll happen. I mean, with if the numbers that we've sold can, I don't think they're going to stay steady again. But if they're in that realm for like a few campaigns, I think that would be, you know, maybe not, supreme yeah. you know maybe maybe not you know whatever huge label but i think there would be like some some mid-sized labels that would be like yo we'd like to get like in on this i think we could we could make something happen i i'm i'm making that prediction right now and whatever today is may 28 2020 i'm, I'm putting it in ink um, but i think part of the thing is too and, and not to make this the gas up northern line podcast but i think what people forget too is that you know you're in the point zero zero x percentage of twitch and even youtube in, in the gaming space but i feel like it's almost like uh and this is a co topic for another conversation it's not it's almost like you're not like that like you're not it's like you you're there but i don't know if it's like how you act it's not i don't you know what i'm saying it's like you're there you're in the top at like echelon yeah yeah <laughs> and but it, I, I, you know what i mean like it feels like as a person you're not if that makes sense. And that's not an insult. It's like you're no, I, I mean, I agree. And if this is the gas up me moment, you know, I think there's two things there. One is like, I resent being famous. Like, I, and I'm not famous in a traditional sense, but I like, I don't really have a desire for attention. 
I, I attention is like a means to an end. Like I want to do this for a living and I'd like to grow. So I need some degree of attention, but I'm not out there like courting controversy at every available <laughs> opportunity and like saying dumb stuff. And then the other thing is like, I, I don't want to call myself ambitionless. Like I have ambition, but my ambition is not to get to a million subscribers and I'll do whatever it takes to get to a million subscribers. Even if that means like selling out my own principles, it's more like, it might take me a long time to get to a million subscribers, but I think I can do it my way. So I keep a goal in mind or an ambition in mind, but I don't change my whole reason for existence to meet the goal. Instead, I you know might make like tweaks here and there, but I, I'm not like, I don't, I don't have a desire to be like a 10 million subscriber YouTube channel if getting there would require me to, you know, Sell out what got me to <laughs> <laughs> No, exactly. I, I get it. I get it. Okay, cool. So we're gonna we're gonna wrap this episode with a couple live Q and A's and a couple or questions from the live studio audience and Twitch and a couple questions uh, from Twitter. We're gonna go right to Twitter while the some of the live questions come in. Um, this one is says this is from Cheaty Hot Beef. It says what takes the most time during your recording process? Is it the processing, uploading, editing, finding games to play prep? So looking to identify the one segment of recording that takes the longest. And I'm laughing because I thought I'm <laughs> You already know probably what I'm going to say too, but for the most part, it's recording. Like, I know that's maybe that's not the answer you're looking for, but by far, the for, for other YouTubers, it would be different. A lot of other YouTubers might film for an hour and then edit for 12 hours, right? Um, but for me, recording is at least... 80% of the time it takes to get the video up. The thumbnail takes a couple minutes. The metadata takes five minutes. And like for Northern Lion Tries, finding the game, sometimes it can take half an hour. But like, I think it, the, the simple answer is like the thing that takes the most time is, is the recording process itself. Okay. Uh, How about you? I'm taking the recording process out of it. But for me, is <laughs> sometimes it's the, the audio. Like every time like because i've i'm always just like looking at that little bar on x but i'm like okay is the game just a little sliver and my voice is like 20 slivers that's what takes me the longest outside yeah. of recording it um so that's why i left because it really shouldn't but it does uh all right we're gonna take a question uh from okay th this is from daly and the live twitch audience says how do you split your time between streaming and youtube and side projects like merch podcasting etc so how do you split your time between all that stuff it changes over time um i this is a tough question to answer specifically because i don't i don't twitch is the same more or less like twitch is like three hours monday usually eight hours sometimes a little bit less sometimes a little bit more on tuesday three hours wednesday three hours thursday Checkpoint League if I'm still in it on Fridays and, uh, you know, three hours on Sunday. But it uh, on YouTube, it changes, you know, like seven videos of One Step from Eden took a lot less time than seven videos from Monster Train. And just within one week, you might do seven Isaac episodes that average 22 minutes in length. And you might do seven Isaac episodes that average 50 minutes in length. So like the way I would say it is I think I try to split it about 50 50 but youtube definitely like twitch is like a, a a metronome like i'm i'm on when i say i'm gonna be on i'm off when i say i'm gonna be off and then uh sponsored stuff on top of that youtube is like there's work that's got to be done so i don't i don't keep myself strict on time i'm just like you know i the minimum i do a day on youtube is what has to be done and then if it takes me longer than usual to finish it it takes me longer than usual to finish it if i finish it 75 percent faster then i then i do more that day so i'm ahead for the future if you were to just give, give an average number of hours per day on youtube like what's the minimum hours per day on youtube that you have to spend strict strictly speaking it would be yeah. like you know isaac monster train so let's say like isaac's like 40 minutes northern lion tries is half an hour uh monster train is like an hour and 10 minutes so I don't know. You're looking at like two and a half hours there. Baseball golden goblet usually is like 20 minutes. So you're up to like two hours. It's not really that much time. Um, do you then, bash you know, record Isaac or no? You only do one. I Isaac try to. I try to when I get the time. Yeah. 
And then GeoGuessr three times a week. And then, you know, Malf and I are going to do a little uh, co-op baseball as well. So that'll be like another half hour a day added on top of that. And then setting the videos is probably like another, I don't know, usually half an hour to an hour if you include exporting this stuff from Twitch and getting it set up. So it's probably like four to five hours, seven days a week on YouTube. Okay. Not all of it. Like this Saturday, I don't record, but you know, it, you still got the metadata stuff that you just kind of do quietly in the background. So I, I think it's like, you know, four to five hours Twitch and three to four hours. Uh, sorry, four to five hours YouTube and like three to four hours Twitch, but it's been more lately. Cause like there's been a lot of sponsored stuff yeah. basically. Uh, on my end, I always speak to when there's something out of the ordinary going on. So, like, by this time, if you're listening to this podcast, it already happened. But, like, there's this project I wanted to do, and I worked on it. And I'm like, okay, like, all the other stuff doesn't go away. So, what I do when there's a project and, like, it requires a lot, like, something completely out of the normal scheduling, I'm just like, I just, it's not probably the best way to do it, but it just comes to me, it comes at the late night end. So, I, like, I, I essentially take out some sleep and replace said project um all right next question this is from live on twitch it says uh, okay this is the uh, this is the a fair question this is a specific merch question it's from mm. cubicle nine it says what was the it says highest selling piece of merch what i think it means what was the most popular item that was sold you I know i think i think the most popular three items are the two hoodies mm -hmm. the embroidered pullover and the the zip up and the dad hat mm. and that was the one where i was when i was talking with jay i was like i'm really surprised the dad hat sells sold so well i think it's because like you know when i wear a snapback it looks normal when i wear a dad hat the brim is like here <laughs> so it makes it look like i got a really tiny top of the head and like a huge forehead which is true <laughs> but the snapback i like i only wear like snapbacks and like curved brim baseball hats and stuff like that so the the dad hats are they're more popular than i expected do do you know what the number one like you're like this you're pretty sure i can this check was, right okay, now right. honestly like, yeah it, it it'll only take a second to load here one sec um what well, well okay it's yeah. taking more than a second okay. you could... i'll do a question it says wait, uh, wait, wait i got it okay, i got, okay, I got okay. it okay i mean in terms of number of orders it's the dad hat was the but, num the number one most selling? Yes. Wow. But that's, that's the I would say it's actually the badge uh, zip up hoodie because the dad hat is just one item. And now that I look oh, at this, I see excuse. that it's, it's broken down by size. Mm. So like dad, it goes dad hat, large zip up, medium zip up, like right behind it. In, so the zip ups definitely sum to way more. In before someone screenshots your glasses and then reverse engineers the numbers <laughs> you just looked at on Reddit. Um, the next question is, uh, okay, this one seems pretty niche I, and I don't have an answer to it, but this from Cheeto says, what is, what is your method you both to try? Let me start. This. What is a method you both try and implement to reach different time zones for your audience acquisition? Um, on YouTube, I publish videos from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. local time. So I figure that kind of hits a lot. Um, but the other, like on Twitch, I think it's unrealistic to, to do that because I, I, the, the approach that I take, and we've talked about this a lot on the show, but is that it's like a long-term thing. And you're way better off building something sustainable that, you know, you can build a little momentum and have it get accumulated over time rather than like, I'm going to stream, I'm going to do one stream in the morning, my time, and then I'm going to do one stream at night. That way I'm hitting like Asia and Oceania, and I'm also hitting North America and Europe can kind of squeeze it in the middle. Like, um, I, I don't think that's realistic for, for you to keep up long term, short term, for sure. Like, especially if you got a burst of energy, you're like, you know, I can stream. This is the way every like full-time streamer starts is like, now that I don't have my other job, I can stream 14 hours a day. And then after like a month, they're like, I'm sick. <laughs> <laughs> and I like, I hate myself and everyone in my chat. So I think like that, I do think time zones matter. And it's unfortunate to say, but I think like if you're in a time zone, like if you're an English streamer, and I assume you would be if you're asking the question and watching this show, but you live in like Australia, it probably burns you more than if you live on like the East Coast of America. Because the East Coast of America, if you stream at like noon, 
Europe's getting you at like eight to ten p.m. Dinner or time, like, where my UK my yeah. UK peeps have to <laughs> sit down and watch a show at dinner. Sorry, go ahead. And yeah, no, I mean like you know the East Coast is like the same time as you, and the West Coast is like late morning. Maybe it's not bad, right? But if you're in Australia and you go live at like noon, I don't even know it. It might be like four a.m. <laughs> in in North America, and like so, it it probably I imagine is more of a concern if you live, uh, you know, if you live somewhere that. Like I mean, it, it's just demographics, right? Like if you if you speak English, most of your audience is going to be from America. So the further you are away from the American time slot, I think the easier it is for you to capture, or the harder it is for you to capture that audience. But yeah, the the only thing, like the only physical thing that I do is every now and then, and sometimes based on my schedule, but sometimes I'll do it just to mess around. Is I'll slide my start time an hour earlier or hour later, maybe to just you know, just to change it up, like, and like one day for the week and just to see how it goes. Maybe you catch someone who's normally is sleeping or, uh, you know, so that's the only thing I'll do a little bit, but it's not it's like if 95% of the time I'm starting at 11 a.m. Eastern, the other 5% I'm either starting at 10 a.m. or noon, but just sometimes I will do that just to mix it up though. Um, you know what I will say? Yeah. And, and I think this is more actionable. What I do to try to like make the time zone stuff not suck so bad if you live in like Central or Eastern Europe in particular, and or or if you work third shift or whatever in in North America, is I try to get the vods up on YouTube in a reasonable time frame so that you can watch them, you know, whenever you want to watch them. Like there's there's some content that I like that go it starts at like six a.m. Pacific time, and I'm like I'm never gonna make that live, but on <laughs> YouTube I'm like oh today's episode is already up, so I can just peep that myself right now. Um, this one this is an interesting one, and I got to answer this one. Oog78 says, when is the last time you went to record a game you didn't want to play anymore or was difficult to get motivated, motivated to record it or stream? Why don't you start on that one? Then? Yeah, so, give me a chance to think about yeah, it. Yeah, so I was really fired up. Uh, the new Star Citizen patch dropped and I waited. It went like testing. It went second testing. Then it went public. I'm like, let me wait till it goes public. I'm excited. I want to do a first look at video. And I'm like, all right, dude, this is like, it has people want Star Citizen. I sit down to record it and it, and like when I record, like my time is like, all right, if I got to do a 20 minute video, I got 30 minutes to do it. Or like, yeah. you know, I got a chunk. So I went down to record it and it was like, no disrespect. And I love Star Citizen. It was like 90 minutes of a slideshow. Like I was, uh, <laughs> I was like, it kept breaking. And I'm like sitting here, I'm like getting mad. Cause I'm like, it's Saturday, just burning out an hour and a half trying to get a 20 minute video, record the video. And I'm like, I can't do this. I'm not even posting this video. And it's like, I love Star Citizen and I want to play it, but I can't trade 90 minutes and not even have a video. So that was like, and this was like two weeks ago. And I was like, it went from being fired up to being like, Shh, and I was like, all right, you know, just got to move on and eat and, it. Yeah, yeah, eat it. And, then, and that's rare that that happens because, you know, I mean, you're the same way. Our time, like we both treat our time like, you know, we can't just burn 90 minutes on a technical issue or we can, but it's not ideal. What about for you? Uh... There's two answers. The the slightly misleading answer is like it doesn't happen. Yeah. It it has happened in the past, but like in the last 6 months, I can't really think of a time where I was like I am sitting down and this is a chore. Yeah. The the real more granular answer is Northern Lion tries like twice a week. <laughs> <laughs> Which is not when I'm recording the videos, I enjoy it. But sometimes when I'm looking for this stuff, I'm like, I don't want to look for this stuff. <laughs> like, I just, I could be getting further ahead in Isaac. I could be getting further ahead in Monster Train. And mon not just getting further ahead, but Monster Train is like a ton of fun. I could be doing that instead of rolling the dice on a game that I just found on Steam. But like when I'm actually recording, I'm having a great time almost all the time. Um, sometimes in the last 10 minutes of a video, I'll be looking at the clock waiting for like that 22 minute mark <laughs> to roll around and be like, okay, we're going to stop. But the only time it happens reliably now is you they get to go in fits and spurts. I'll get five codes for stuff for Northern Lion tries that looks cool. And I'm like, that Monday, Friday's set. Easy. Then I'm recording, yeah, I'm recording Saturday's video. And I'm like, this is something that like somebody made. It's just them. It's not that good, but there's like a good idea in it somewhere. And I'm like, ah, I just, uh, <laughs> you know. But some of those games end up being great. And some of them end up being not so great, but. Yeah, you know, you know how it is. I mean, I, I take it as a Northern Lion time principle is that, you know, we joke about it, but I think about it a lot is, you know, on today's show, I showed off uh, my stream setup and like underneath is the spaghetti yeah. cables and people are like, why don't you, you know, 
do cable management. And to me, that's like tedious. It'll take me five plus hours where I could just either do a show or record 10 videos in that time. So it's like, it's kind of just, you know, I don't know. I, I don't like doing stuff like that. I'd rather just record. I will right, we'll go, we'll go one more live and then one more Twitter. Um, this one says, this is from Jao Montero. It says, how long do you see yourselves still doing stuff for YouTube and streaming? I guess longevity. How long do you want to do this for type question? Uh, I am more in for the long term now than I was like two years ago, for sure. I think two years ago, like I wasn't on the way out where I was like looking for the door, but I was like getting into the programming Program, stuff more. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, this stuff is like, to be honest, I was looking, there's, I've never forgotten about like the, the good stuff about doing this job, but I was also looking at like the good stuff about doing programming where I'm like, it's stable for the most part, which is good. You can still like financially do very well. And uh, it it kind of has, uh, it's it's almost got the same value proposition to some extent uh, as uh, as YouTubing and streaming. You know, you, you could be like a mildly successful programmer. You could be destitute or you could, you know, work for a startup that goes to a billion and, and be set for life after like, you know, 18 months of work. Right. Obviously that last one is much rarer, but it's the same on YouTube and Twitch, I think. So, you know, I, and I genuinely enjoyed like the duty of coding. So I was, I was like, you know, probably like, probably like a bad, like one year run on YouTube where numbers were down and people were being like total jerks. <laughs> I was like, maybe I could just pivot out of this, but now I'm like, I've, I, I enjoy it more and I've kind of doubled down on it more. So I, I guess I couldn't say, indefinitely but if we're looking ahead like at least like the five-year outlook for me is really is really high like I, I guess the the more interesting question is i don't know what it would take for me to want to leave at, at this point I, and i the other thing is i don't know what i would do like for one i don't know where i would pivot occupationally if i got to the point where i didn't have to pivot occupationally and could essentially retire I think it, like as of right now, I would really still just be bored. Like, I, I don't think I'm done yet. I, I think I've got a lot more left to do. Yeah. But how about you? Um, I, I think for me, it was always like, I knew I'd do it for a long time, but like part-time where now it's like really in the past nine months to a year, it's like, I'm, I've started to see some success and like, uh, where it's, you know, where it's more exciting where now it's like, it's now starting to become an option or more realistic option to go full time where like you can sit down and have the conversation and be like, all right, do we make a run at this thing now or not? And, and so, I, and I don't think I'm very realistic. Like I live, like I, I live in what's here, not what, Oh, if this and this happens and then I can do it. It's like, it's been with that, that push of success or like having the backing it's definitely not that I ever saw myself not doing it, but it makes it more real to like kind of roll the dice and go full time. So that's kind of where I'm at in the process. I have no plans to ever stop in the near future, but it's for me, it's a little bit different of a scenario. It's not like you're already full time. And yeah. while I put full time effort in, I'm still like, I still got my other thing, like my programming safe thing, because once you, you know, once you take the jump, you take the jump and then you see what happens. So that that's where where I'm at with that. So I guess that's a TBD for me. Um, all right. And then the last question will go off of Twitter. Uh, this is from, you know, I'm going to, there's just so many good live ones. We're going to do one more live one. This is from, uh, that's a, that's a tough question. Uh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna ask that one. It's, it's a relationship question. I'm not gonna ask that one. Uh, okay. This one, this one is still has some, and I feel like we've answered this, but maybe not. This is from Pib Nemo. It says, how do you balance being a good spouse slash father and the drive to work all the time? You guys are on the grind so much. I'll let you take yeah, that one. Yeah. It's uh, like, it's definitely tough. It's tough now. And obviously, like, we're in two different situations where you already have kids and our first is arriving, you know, probably in late September. Um, so it's... uh. I mean, it's, it's probably like the number one occupational thing that I struggle with, which is like, I definitely like I work a lot. I, I usually work maybe from like 1030 or 11 until eight minimum. Um, but even then, like when you, you know, 
And I, I think this is mostly for perspective for people that are maybe like a little bit younger, maybe, maybe don't work full time or, or go to school or live at home. Like you're not just off when you're done, <laughs> you know, like you've got to eat. So you've got to cook. And then after you cook, you got to do the dishes. And then all the stuff that happened during the day when you were working has to be dealt with, you know, you got to do your, your chores, you got to do your laundry, you got to, you know, vacuum or sweep or whatever you got mail that has to be handled. You got emails that came in from people that, you know, actually require attention and stuff like that. So you really have like a very, you, you got to make the time to have some, some like spousal time to, to be fair to your spouse, I think. So really for, for me, the way I balance it is like Saturday is off limits. Like I will not, I will work on Saturday for sure, but I won't record on Saturday. The, the only work I do is the bare minimum Couple of videos. <laughs> yeah, a couple of TikToks, put videos on YouTube. And once a month, I have to edit together the compilation, right? The, the things I don't have space for in like my day to day life. But apart from that, and usually all that stuff happens like before Kate even wakes up. But then, like, as soon as she wakes up, like, we're good to go is more or less what it comes down to. So, and I think that's something that I can't even feel comfortable answering because I'm sure it's going to get totally screwed up when we have our, our daughters. So like for right now, I'm not even comfortable answering it with any degree of confidence. Cause I think I, I'm not going to be an expert on it for a while. You know, it's, it's constantly a work in progress right now. Yeah. I'd say this, the same for me. I'd say the one thing I do to kind of keep myself in check is because I have the tendency, I'm sure similar to you to like over to overwork or to get, at least I get, what I'll do is whatever I'm doing, I get tunnel focused in and I'll lose track of time whether it be team unity, recording, whatever. And so kind of what I've been doing lately that helps me keep myself in check is when I get home, like a after the kids go down and stuff and after I talk to my wife, I'll, I'll like ask myself, did I miss anything today? And when I say by miss anything, did I miss anything at home with either my wife or my kids? And if the answer is yes, then it's like, oh man, like that doesn't feel good. Like, and it'll push me to be like, okay, hey, like for two weeks ago or whatever, like, start and stop time like that's really important was why was that important because i felt like i'd missed something and so i think to me that just kind of helps me keep in check and then also the other thing too i mean this is an easy answer forehead is you know obviously just talk to your spouse right like i'll talk to my wife and, and my wife chelsea and i'll be like hey how do you think i'm doing at home is there anything i can do and and because sometimes i can't like i get so lost in what i'm doing like i don't necessarily keep my bearings on Hey, so like just checking in, like really helps me. Like, is there anything more I can do to help? How do you think? Like, so I think just op opening myself up at home to be like, Hey, if there's something off, like, don't wait to tell me, like I always check in. And that's been something that's, that's helped on my end. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's so, just good advice in general. Yeah. Co <laughs> it's like the communicate, <laughs> communicate forehead. So speaking of communicate forehead, thank you guys so much for tuning in to episode 16 uh, you have less than, if you're audio, you have less than eight hours to go to northernline.shop. But his one, you, you know what? It. You give him an eight second ask because I want to hear your ask. Yeah. Uh, if you want to support me, we're selling merch and it is good merch that looks cool. Uh, you will not be embarrassed to wear this merch and it's made of high quality products that are going to feel good on you and you're going to feel good wearing them. Go to northernline.shop, pick up a zip up an embroidered pullover, a hat, a snapback, a dad hat, and or a t-shirt of your choice. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys so much for tuning in, whether you've been watching live or after the fact on youtube.com slash Northern Line or on Spotify, SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, everywhere. Thank you guys for all the love. We will see you guys next Tuesday for the audio edition. We, we, the live, uh, live show may change a day, um, but just uh, keep an eye on Twitter for that. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We will see you guys next week.